Iceland is a volcanic island, shaped by the forces of volcanic eruptions along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Iceland sits right in the middle of the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. The island started forming around 20 million years ago, and it continues to be shaped and defined by volcanic and geothermal activity today. Norwegian, Irish and Scottish settlers were some of the first to establish themselves in Reykjavik. Currently, Iceland has a population of nearly 357,000 people, which is less than the population of Bristol. When I visited Iceland for the first time, I was struck by the sheer amount of empty space. You can be driving for hours and see nothing but lava fields and breathtaking scenery. The lack of huge urban settlements is something I found hugely refreshing. Iceland boasts some of the most phenomenal landscapes and scenery on the planet, with this stark contrast between fire and ice. On some parts of the island, giant glaciers dominate, creating these huge lagoons filled with chunks of ice deposited by the glacier. These icebergs can be seen tumbling in the water as they are swept out to sea. It's a very surreal experience seeing these boulder-sized pieces of ice washed up on the shoreline. Because of its volcanic history, Iceland is also characterised by its geothermal landscapes, with scalding pools of water bubbling away like a cauldron, geysers spewing out plumes of water high into the sky, and boiling puddles of mud bubbling like a pot of soup. For me, one of the most phenomenal geothermal landscapes in Iceland was in the highland region of the country. Here, fire and ice fused together into a single landscape, creating a mixture of snow-capped mountains and steaming vents. Videos don't really do the landscape justice, it's one of the most incredible places I've been anywhere in the world. Iceland is also home to some majestic waterfalls and rivers, which cut through the landscape, creating impressive gorges and valleys. The West Fjords in northwest Iceland boast stunning 360 degree views of fjords and bays, which look particularly impressive lit up orange in the summer solstice light. As well as jaw-dropping landscapes, Iceland is home to some amazing wildlife, with around 400 species of bird being recorded on the island. Around 85 species nest on the island or are seen regularly, and the rest are migrants or vagrants. The latter means species that appear in an area even if it's not their normal range. So this can happen when species are blown off course by storms, for example. One of the most charismatic bird species in Iceland is the Atlantic Puffin. Atlantic Puffins are one of four species of puffin in the world, and Iceland is home to one of the world's largest puffin colonies. Over half the world's population of Atlantic Puffins breed in Iceland, and it's estimated that there are between 8 to 10 million puffins on the island, which is very impressive. Puffins spend most of their time out at sea. They only come to shore to breed and raise a single chick called a puffling. They're strong swimmers underwater, using their wings and flippers to propel themselves and steer. They mainly feed on fish by diving underwater to catch them. Puffins have the remarkable ability to hold up to 60 small fish in their beak at a time and they do this by using their tongue to hold the fish against these protruding structures on the roof of their mouths. Puffins breed in large colonies on coastal cliffs or on offshore islands. They nest in rock crevices or in burrows in the soil. And it's the male Atlantic puffins that build the nest and make it welcoming to the female. If the nest or burrow isn't up to scratch, the female can reject the male, as this indicates less favourable breeding characteristics. 
Puffins form long-term pair bonds and both parents incubate the egg and feed the chick. Puffins are well known for their colourful beaks, but they only have these bright colours during the breeding season. For the rest of the year, they shed the colourful parts of their bills, leaving a smaller, duller beak. Pufflings are completely grey. They lack their breeding parents' bright colours. Puffins are hunted for their eggs, feathers and meat. Their populations have declined as a result of exploitation and as a result of habitat destruction. Globally, they are currently classified as vulnerable by the IUCN. Another amazing seabird which you get in Iceland is the gannet. These are the largest seabirds in Iceland. We also get gannets here in the UK and they are characterised by their sleek white bodies, the black tips on their wings and their yellowish heads. There are three species of gannet globally and the ones you get in Iceland and in the UK are northern gannets. Gannets hunt fish by diving into the sea from high above. They can hit the water at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour and they can dive from around 30 metres up. Gannets breed in large colonies and they normally rear a single chick each year. Gannet pairs are monogamous and they may remain together for life. They separate once their chick has fledged but they bond again the following year. They make their nest out of seaweed and debris from the sea. Nests are aggressively defended and intruders are not tolerated. Territorial fights can last for hours and can cause serious injury. One species of bird I was particularly thrilled about seeing whilst I was in Iceland was the majestic Gia falcon. This is the largest species of falcon and it's about the same size as a common European goshawk. They vary greatly in coloration, ranging from all white to dark brown. They're sexually dimorphic, with the female being much larger than the male. This geofalcon made quick work of a guillemot, removing its head and feeding on its meat, leaving a pool of feathers on the ground. As well as the huge diversity of bird species, there are 23 species of cetaceans that have been seen in Icelandic waters. The North Atlantic Ocean surrounding Iceland is very rich, supporting lots of prey for whales, dolphins and other marine mammals like seals. There's something about Iceland that keeps drawing me back. I'm awed by the wonder of this almost mystical place, with its extensive lava fields sprawling for hundreds of kilometres, the jagged fjords that seem to appear out of nowhere, shrouded in low-lying cloud, the geothermal highlands where the mountains billow steam and gases, and the seemingly never-setting summer sun. The serene tranquility of this magical place is where I let my mind wander when I'm overwhelmed by the hecticness of modern life. With life being so unsettled and different, given the current state of the COVID-19 pandemic, I hope you can all draw some peace and tranquility from this video and the phenomenal landscapes and wildlife which Iceland has to offer.